Hello, and welcome to another Arlington High School Math for Honors lesson. My name is Kirk Weiler, and today we're going to be doing unit number four, additional derivative definition problems. So this isn't, um, it doesn't have an official lesson number. I like to sometimes do a day after I've introduced the limit definition of the derivative to just look at one additional problem, see what kind of messy algebra can arise, um, remind ourselves of the geometry of what's going on. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at only one function, and then we're going to find its derivative at both a specific value of x, and then we're also going to find its derivative function. So let's jump in and do that. All right. Consider the function f of x equals 6 divided by x plus 2. <clears throat> All right. It says create a sketch of the function below. Draw the tangent line at x equals 1. What's the y value there? All right, well, you know, a function like y equals 6 divided by x plus 2 is going to have a vertical asymptote, as we well know, at x equals negative 2. That didn't work out all that well, but, you know, good enough. And it's going to look a lot like y equals 1 divided by x plus 2. It's just going to be stretched a bit in the y direction due to that 6 in the numerator. But ultimately, we're still going to get that kind of, like, curviness like that. There's also a section of it down here, right? But I don't care about that so much. Now, if we draw the tangent line, <coughs> excuse me, at x equals 1, all right, let me draw that in red. i just try to sketch it. Well, that was supposed to actually hit the curve there. I apologize that it didn't. Um, we can easily figure out the y value. f of 1 equals 6 divided by 1 plus 2, 6 divided by 3, gives me 2. Right, so I have the point 1 comma 2. All right, back to blue. Letter B then says, use the limit definition of the derivative at a point. <clears throat> so the derivative at a point to determine the slope of the curve at x equals 1. So I want to figure out f prime of 1. All right, so let's remember how Newton did this. What Newton did was he cam comes over here and he puts in an x, right? Then he goes up here and he says, ah, well, at that point, I've got the point x, comma, 6 divided by x plus 2, right? Because that's the y value. Now, what I'm going to be doing with that is I'm going to be figuring out the slope of this secant line. Ah, oh, terribly drawn. That line was supposed to go through those two points. Anyway, so let's do that. Let's figure out the slope of the secant line. Well, it's y2. Right, this guy is y2 minus y1, that's y1, divided by x2, which is that thing, minus x1, which is that thing. All right, and I want you to keep in mind, right, that, that tells me the secant slope, I know it's a little bit of an ugly formula, but it tells me the secant slope or the average rate of change for the interval 1 to x, no matter what x is, as long as x isn't 1. Now, I actually want f prime of 1, which is the slope of the tangent line. That's that red line. All right. So in order to do that, 100% of the time, I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to scoot it along till it heads here. In other words, I want x2 to go to x1, all right? So specifically, what I'm going to have is the limit as x goes to 1 of 6 divided by x plus 2 minus 2, all divided by x minus 1. Now note, if you put that actually in there, what you end up getting is 2, divide, 2 minus 2 divided by 1 minus 1, or 0 divided by 0. That's actually a check for us, because ultimately speaking, we are always, always, always looking at delta y divided by delta x as we allow delta x to go down to 0. And in the case where delta x goes to 0, delta y should always go to 0 if it's a continuous function, and so we should get 0 divided by 0. All right. That being said, I'm going to erase that so I have some more space. All right. So now how do we deal with this? Well, we deal with it by trying to remove the complex fraction. All right. So I've got this complex fraction, 6 divided by x plus 2 minus 2, all divided by x minus 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my numerator and my denominator, and I'm going to multiply them both. 
by x plus 2. Okay? Let's see what happens. When I distribute this, right, there, the x plus 2's will cancel, and I'll just be left with 6. There, nothing cancels, and I'll just be left with minus 2 times x plus 2. And the denominator is simply that factored form. Now, be careful. Some people may look at the numerator and think, oh, that's factored. You know, it's 6 minus 2 times x plus 2. No, it's not. The numerator is not factored. You can't cancel those x plus 2s. Resist the urge. All right. So I let x go to 1. I distribute 6 minus 2x minus 4 divided by x minus 1 times x plus 2. I'm going to simplify that. I'm going to get, let's see, well, nothing with the 2x, negative 2x and then plus 2 divided by x minus 1 times x plus 2. Right, the limit as x goes to 1. Whoops, lost that. Now I'll factor a negative 2 out of the numerator. I'm running out of space, which means my head has probably been moving all over the place. And look at that. Now, really, we knew that that x minus 1 was going to have to cancel. The only way this limit was going to exist, and clearly it must exist because that, that line exists, the tangent line exists. If the tangent line exists, it's got a slope, and if it's got a slope, this limit's got to give it to us. So we knew that x minus 1 had to cancel, because if it didn't, there was no way this was ever going to exist. But now that that x minus 1 has canceled, we can substitute 1 in. We'll get negative 2 divided by 1 plus 2, right, because we're putting it in right there. And that's negative 2 thirds. So there's my slope. There's f prime of 1, negative 2 thirds. All right. The worst part of this problem is the complex fraction work. Everything else is setting up a slope and then finding the limit of that slope as the run goes towards zero. All right, well, I'm going to clear this out, so pause the video now, and then we'll move on and we'll find the derivative function for f of x. All right, let's do it. Now, in a previous lesson, the way that we found the derivative function was we brought in a delta x. Okay, and I like that because what we really had was we had the delta x going to zero to find the derivative function. Um, a lot of textbooks don't use delta x because they don't want delta x to be confused with x, right? That, uh, th this can cause confusion in people. People can be puzzled, right? Delta x versus x. So a lot of them use the variable h instead of x, and I'll explain why. So here's another definition, and I'll, I'll show you the entire geometry. It's really exactly the same definition that we had previously, but we had delta x goes to zero, and then there was a delta x here, and there was a delta x there. But I'm going to show it to you for h. So we're going to now find f prime of x. And again, let's, uh, let's just get a little sketch. I'm going to throw that vertical asymptote on just for reference. There it is. So let me show you how this definition works. Okay, Very similar to the one with delta x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a value of x. That's where I want my tangent line. Then what I'm going to have is I'm going to add h to it. I think most textbooks use h because the idea is that you've got... Um, You've got the horizontal increase or the horizontal separation between the two points. Now remember, my function f of x is 6 divided by x plus 2. All right, so this thing has, it's very easy, right? It's x comma 6 divided by x plus 2. This one's a little bit trickier. It's x plus h and then 6 divided by x plus h plus 2. But once I have those two, then I should be able to establish, I should be able to establish the slope of the line that goes through the two, right? My secant slope. And that will be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. But that's just h, right? Right, that's always just h. It's delta x, it's h, right? Now, what I want, yet again, 
is I want my x2 to slide towards my x1. And the way that I accomplish that algebraically is by looking at the limit as h goes to 0 of this expression. 6 divided by a, x plus h plus 2 minus 6 divided by x plus 2 all over h. Now again, at this point, once you've set up the, the slope and added the limit in, I always advise actually doing the limit by substitution to make sure you're getting 0 divided by 0. So if I actually took this thing and I made h into 0, obviously I'd get 0 down here. But then up here I'd have 6 divided by x plus 2 minus 6 divided by x plus 2, which I'm pretty sure is, is equal to 0 as well. So we get 0 divided by 0, so check, right? Good, good thing. 0 divided by, whoops, 0 divided by 0, awesome. Now I'm going to have to simplify it though, and keep in mind that h has got to cancel. But I'm going to simplify it by multiplying by the two denominators, x plus h plus 2 and x plus 2. Remember, I have to do that in both the numerator and the denominator. All right. Now, remember, I'm distributing this sort of like product through, and it's a little bit ugly. When I distribute the first thing through, the x plus h plus 2 cancel, and I'm just left with 6 times x plus 2. The exact opposite thing kind of ha happens when I multiply this, the x plus 2's cancel, and I'm left with 6 times x plus h plus 2. And then I will never multiply out that denominator. Never multiply out that denominator. So I'll have h times x plus h times plus 2 times x plus 2. Now remember, I've got to get that i got to get that x plus 2 to cancel. That x plus 2 has got to go away, otherwise I'll never, I'm sorry, not the x plus 2, my bad. Just strike everything I just said. I have to get this to cancel. That's what's got to cancel, right? Otherwise, when h goes to 0, that's going to force my denominator to go to 0. I can't have that. So anyway, let's clean it up a little bit. Let's just play around and let's wait, because at some point in time, we're going to be able to cancel out that h. So anyway, I distribute the 6, and I get 6x plus 12. I distribute the negative 6, and I get negative 6x minus 6h minus 12, divided by h times x plus h. That's supposed to be an x plus 2 times x plus 2. And watch how it simplifies. Positive 6, negative 6, positive 12, negative 12. Ooh, that was nice that that all canceled. And now I am the prize. We can now cancel this with this. Good deal. My offending factor has canceled. The limit as h goes to 0 of negative 6 divided by x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. Well, now, still have to let h equal 0. But once I do, I'll have x plus 2 times x plus 2 in the denominator. So I will end up getting that. That is my derivative function. Now, um, one thing that the problem asks us to do, and I don't, I don't have a lot of room for this, but I think I can fit it in, is it says check to verify f prime of 1 is consistent with your answer from number 1. Keep in mind that in number 1 we found that f prime of 1 was equal to negative 2 thirds. It's not on the screen right now, but this is f prime of x, f prime of x. So let me carve out probably the only space I had for my head. Um, and let's do it. See, now I can say f prime of 1 is negative 6 divided by, <coughs> excuse me, 1.2 squared, which is negative 6 divided by 3 squared, which is negative 9. I'm oh, sorry, positive 9. And negative 6 divided by 9, that's negative 2 thirds. Which is what we got in part A, or problem number 1, or whatever. All right. So this was exactly the same approach we took when we had a delta x there. The only difference is we're calling it h instead of delta x. You can use either approach in my class. I don't know about others. But it's nice, right? We still set up this secant slope. 
We still allow x2 to go to x1. The big difference now is that x1 is not a specific value of x, it's just called x. And to get x2 to go to x1, we let the horizontal distance between the two shrink down to zero. All right, well, I'm going to stop there. All right, pause the video now and write down anything you need to. All right, let's clear it out. And let's finish up. All right, so that was just an, another problem that emphasized the limit definition of the derivative at a single value of x and the limit definition of the derivative function. These are both very important. Soon we'll be getting into a lot of rules, the power rule, the quotient rule, the product rule, the chain rule, the blah, 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 right? All these rules that will allow us to, in a certain sense, forget the limit definition. But we never want to forget the limit definition because it gets at the essence of what is really going on here. All right. Well, I'm going to stop there. All right. I want to thank you for joining me for another Math for Honors lesson from Arlington High School. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving.